Our first case is 41 years old. She's asymptomatic. She's presenting with her baseline screening mammogram. And this is the CC views. And these are the ML views. So Chris, you're on. Uh, in the left, um, in the inner, inner uh, left inner quadrant, um, there are calcifications extending from extending posteriorly, um, almost in a uh, lobular distribution. Okay. Um, the calcifications um, look pleomorphic. Um, some of them are coarse, but uh, you know they're. They would be, uh, would, they'd be worrisome for um, malignant calcifications. Um, I would do additional views, perhaps spot compression, just to characterize the calcifications. Okay, what type of additional views do we do for calcifications? Magnification. What kind? I'm sorry. Mag. Mag views, okay. So spot compressions, we do more for nodules to look at their borders, and for calcifications, we want to look at morphology. So we have magnification views. This is the CC, and this is the MLO. OK. So further closer inspection of the calcifications. Um, so they're, they're pleomorphic, um, but some of them appear rod-like. Um, which could be in like secretory calcifications, but I think their pleomorphic nature of them makes them uh, concerning for DCIS. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Um, stereotactic biopsy. Okay, and where are we going to do the biopsy? Which calcifications would you target? Um, uh, you know. <laughs> Take your yeah, pick. A big, the, you know, the. Second most anterior ones. I okay. mean, what well, what we want to know is if all of these calcifications are cancer. Because if they're all cancer, what does she need? Um, well, I mean, if, if they're all cancer, what's the treatment? Well, you have to. I mean, you have to remove it. I mean, but right. in so, our institution, we we try to conserve the breast. So you know, I've seen them try to do like segmentectomies on. Okay, this. If all of these were malignant, she would, would definitely need a mastectomy. So what we're going to do is biopsy the most anterior group and the most posterior group. And if they both come back cancer, then she is not a candidate for breast conservation because it's over four centimeters worth of cancer. And this was seven centimeters from here to here. So we sampled the anterior uh, grouping. This is the most anterior. This is the most posterior. Stereotactic. We always do specimen radiographs to make sure we have calcifications. Okay. And what do you think the pathology was, Chris? Ductal carcinoma in situ. Okay. And what are the two types of DCIS? Um. Anybody? Okay. Comedo and high grade, or I'm sorry. Comedo is the linear casting, branching calcifications. It may be palpable. It's an aggressive tumor, high nuclear grade. When you biopsy these pleomorphic calcifications in the segmental distribution, like this case, the overall biopsy yield is at least 90% DCIS. So these are, these are a class 5 type calcifications. The second type is the cribriform or papillary. They're fine. The granular, they're called the low nuclear grade. The overall biopsy yield for uh, the fine granular calcifications is only 30%. Um, it overlaps a lot with sclerosing adenosis and fibrocystic change. Okay, so a, a mastectomy was recommended. The uh, girl, she's 41 years old, uh, opted to have a mastectomy with immediate reconstruction. Her surgery was set. And lo and, behold, she, lo and behold, she didn't show up on the day of surgery. And after multiple calls, it was found out that she had been in a major car accident and was in Cook County on a ventilator. And she subsequently went to rehab. And now she comes back a year later. And this was the 2003 study here, which we just saw. 
This is now the 2004 study. And what's changed, Chris? Um, number of calcifications has increased. Especially anteriorly here, this whole area has increased. And, and better seen here on the MLO, what's happened right here? Well, maybe it's... And right here. Well, I mean, there's suggestion of, uh, you know, invasive ductal Invasive cancer. ductal. So this is what the comedotype or high-grade um, DCIS does. It's very aggressive, and if you don't treat it immediately, it becomes invasive. And here we did an ultrasound, and that's that little nodule. So here's the invasive component. You can see a calcification within the invasive component. And not only had it invaded... Um, the tissues she also has now, this is the left axilla, she has an enlarged left axillary lymph node, so she has uh, metastatic uh, lymphadenopathy as well. So this is comedo or high-grade DCIS progressing to invasive carcinoma. Very good. Okay, this is a 55-year-old. She's presenting with a palpable mass in the left breast. Okay, so... CC views of both breasts, and we have dense, uh, scattered, coarse, linear-type calcifications. Okay. This is all an artifact. Okay. Here's the MLOs. Okay, so that artifact has disappeared. Uh... So her complaint was the left upper outer quadrant. So okay. that's where the abnormality is. Let me go back. Okay. So this so is the CC. I, this is the outer quadrant. Do you see anything there? Well, I see a subtle uh, linear. I see a subtle abnormal, abnormality along the uh, the lateral aspect of the left breast, which looked to be. Uh, in the upper outer quadrant when compared to the MLO view. Uh, th I think this is most compatible with a um, hamartoma. Okay. What, when we are suspecting some kind of mass lesion, what do we always do next? So we should do spot compression views. So this is the spot compression MLO and the CC. Okay, so again, this redefines, um, it looks to me like it's a, a breast within a breast appearance, but this could also be a calcified, well, a cyst should be more dense than this. Um, I still think it's most compatible with a hamartoma. Okay, any other suggestions? Uh, we can turn the uh, lights up now. A lipoma. Um, this a lipoma of the breast is a radiolucent lesion, totally radiolucent like this. There's no parenchymal density in it. It has a very pencil-sharp capsule right here and right there. It's usually large, greater than two centimeters. It may be palpable. It's soft, movable, and well-delineated. It can grow, uh, but as long as it's totally lucent like this uh, lesion was, we don't need to biopsy it, and we can just follow it and reassure the patient it's just a benign lipoma. What's the differential diagnosis of fat-containing lesions of the breast? Galactosil. Galactosil. Oil cysts. Oil cysts, lipoma. Lymphoma. Hamartoma. Fat necrosis. Or did someone say hematoma? Is that what you said, Aaron? Right. And then uh, a lymph node, right, can have a fatty center. Okay, and just to follow up. Fat-containing lesions, intramammary lymph node, oil cyst, uh, that goes along with fat necrosis or a uh, resolving hematoma, a hamartoma, which is also a fibroadenolipoma, galactosil, or a lipoma. And this is another fat-containing lesion. What is this? Anybody? Galactosil. This is an oil cyst with a fat uh, level, fat-fat level here from a, a, this was a hematoma following a, car accident that developed subsequently into an oil cyst. Okay, 55-year-old with bilateral palpable masses. 
How about someone not from the University of Chicago? <clears throat> cranial caudal and, oops, went wrong way. Cranial caudal and MLO views. Okay, so we're given, uh, so there is in the, in the left outer breast, uh, first of all, these are either very small breasts or they, this is a man. Okay, um, who's going to vote small breasts? I, I think this is a man. Okay, and, and that it's this a male. Is, and that there is uh, increased, there is parenchymal density in the uh, retroareolar area of the left breast. Okay. And that the this other... is marking his palpable abnormality. The nipple is down here on okay. the left. So it's in the upper outer left breast. This is compatible with gynecomastia. Okay. On, on the left, gynecomastia. Uh, what do we do with palpable masses in women? Anybody? Well, we can ultrasound uh, it or we can spot do spot compression. compressions. Okay. So this is the, the spot compression of the left breast mass. If it was a woman, what would you say it was? Uh, this is speculated mass, probably a uh, carcinoma. Okay. And then on the right, this is a male. These are spot compressions in the male. What would you say this is? And this is, well, there's parenchymal density in the retroareolar region. So this is probably gynecomastia on okay. this side. So if we go back to our full field views, this is a male. This is his retroareolar region on the left, which is a normal male breast, all fatty, with the parenchymal density on the right and a flame-shaped distribution right behind the nipple. So this is gyne asymmetric unilateral gynecomastia on the right with a cancer on the left. And again, on the right, it just looks like normal female breast tissue, which is what gynecomastia is. It's just normal breast parenchyma. And then on the left, the abnormality looks more like a, a female cancer. So male breast cancer looks like female breast cancer. And again, our spots demonstrate the speculations and the flame shaped. We did do an ultrasound. This is the palpable mass on the left. Again, it looks like a, a cancer in a female. There's some acoustic shadowing. It's hypoechoic. There's a little angular margins here all go, uh, going along with breast cancer. This is the right breast, and this is a typical appearance of uh, gynecomastia on ultrasound right behind the nipple. You sort of get this disc-like shape, this flamed area of normal breast parenchyma that can be hypoechoic, and it shouldn't be confused with a retroareolar mass. So this was gynecomastia on the right. It's subareolar, often flame-shaped. It can be soft, tender, or palpable. And right now at the University of Chicago, we probably do three male patients a week, most of them with palpable masses, and the vast majority of them are gynecomastia. Uh, it looks like normal breast tissue in a female. It can be unilateral and asymmetric. Uh, it's usually idiopathic. There's like 100 drugs that can cause it. Here are some examples, including marijuana, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, chronic renal failure, and AIDS. And these are the types of patients that we typically see that come in with uh, gynecomastia. Male breast cancer can be retroareolar, but it's often eccentric to the nipple. It's firm, palpable. It can be rock hard. It's painless. They can have bloody nipple discharge. It's identical to a female cancer on the mammogram. It's a very low percentage of all cancers, uh, uh, only 2.2% of all male cancers, but Kleinfelter's has an increased risk of developing it. Okay. This is a 69-year-old. She's asymptomatic, presenting with her screening baseline mammogram. So CC views. Anybody have yeah, the got microphone? It. Uh, so CC views show in the left there's uh, markedly increased density. Um, Looks like she has bilateral scar markers in the outer breasts. Right, those were benign biopsies. Okay. And um, I, primarily I'm concerned about the left retroareolar region. There is in the posterior, in the deep right breast on the CC view, there's an area of density that I'd want to look at 
in the uh, additional views too. Okay. So she has, I'm sorry, she has increased sensitivity actually behind both nipples, maybe a little more prominent on the left. On the CC view, there's this area here. How would you describe that area? Anybody? Well, Mark? It, it's a focal asymmetric density. Focal that, asymmetric density, which is up here on the MLO. Okay. And so what do we do next? Uh, I would do a spot mag, or you do, you do okay. spot compression views, I guess. So here's the spot compression, the CC. It's right here in the MLO. So it, it actually shows up on both views, so it is a real density. Um, I, I don't know that there's actually a central uh, mass. Uh, there appears to be lucency in the center okay. um, compatible with fat. It is somewhat speculated or ill-defined margins. I don't see any associated uh, microcalcification. So I, I would be, uh, with the lucency in the center, I, w I would certainly want to look at it under ultrasound, but a radial scar could have this okay. appearance with a lucent center. So this is architectural distortion, and, and uh, our primary concerns, as he says, is a radial scar, can be cancer. What else gives us the architectural distortion, especially trauma, in this lady with post these biopsy, markers? Post-biopsy post post trauma. So here's the ultrasound. Here's the lesion. What do you think now? Well, I don't think this completely answers the question. There, it's a it's a hypoechoic lesion with irregular margins. Um, this radial scars sometimes don't show up on ultrasound, but can have this appearance, and masses can have this appearance. I think uh, this this has to be dealt with. Probably excisional biopsy. We could biopsy it. Okay. Uh, now as well. I'm in here scanning this lady. And, and she's an elderly lady, and she goes, you know, ever since you, I got the letter that I had to come back for additional views, I felt this mass in my left breast. And I go back, this is a true story, I'm not lying. I go back, I look at this left mammogram again, and I said, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about, she's just a little anxious. Uh, but because she says, you know, it's right here, and she puts her finger on it, I'm in the ultrasound room, so... I put my ultrasound transducer right where she feels it. And right here, what do we have? It, you have a uh, hypochoic mass with irregular margins. Right. It's shadowing, and uh, it's and a suspicious mass. It's, it's a suspicious ultrasound finding. I go back to this ultrasound, I mean to this mammogram, and I still say, even, I know where it is, it's at 11 o'clock. I don't see it really. But I bring her back and do a digital mammogram of the left breast. And right here, there's another area of architectural distortion on the CC view that I don't see very well. It's right in here, close to the scar marker. So now we're sort of stuck, as you say, with sort of indeterminate or indistinct things. Are they radial scars? Are they bilateral cancers? What can we do next to sort of help us, short of doing the biopsy? What's an additional step? more money for the radiologist. You can do an MR, MR post-contrast exam. Okay. So this is the right breast, right here. And here's the left breast. So there's um, markedly increased enhancement in those regions, they're irregular, um, speculated appearing masses. Um, so a, a radial scar would not tend to enhance like that. So it's these are both suspicious for carcinoma. And we actually, this, the surgeon felt this, did an FNA in her office and came back with the diagnosis of infiltrating ductal carcinoma. The second lesion, even though the patient said she felt it, the surgeon couldn't feel it. And we did an ultrasound guided core needle biopsy. It came back as infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Uh, here's just both of the carcinomas on a uh, reconstructed image. Here's the one on the right, which is the bigger lesion, and the one on the left. So this was bilateral infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Uh, it's the most common, of course, breast carcinoma, 80% uh, of all carcinomas. It's a speculated mass with or without calcifications. Ultrasound is typically hypoechoic, taller than wide, with angulated margins and acoustic shadowing, and there's a variety of subtypes. Okay. 73-year-old with a crusty ulceration on the nipple. This is MLO and, we have and CC views. 
So on the MLO, um, there is some skin thickening around the nipple, and I don't really appreciate it um, anywhere else. I'm also looking for any kind of focal mass that might be associated with this. This is a CC view. And on the CC view, again, I see some skin thickening. Um, I really, a little, uh, here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. So I guess um, if that's the right CC view, um, laterally, uh, right behind the nipple, there's an area of uh, density which probably is calcified. You gave me some mag views. There's, uh, there's other calcifications too. For deeper in the breast and deeper behind the nipple. So what I would do is I'd bring her in for some um, magnification views of uh, the calcifications and possibly a, a spot compression of that area behind the nipple that looks like it's... Uh, okay. And so, so this was spot compression view of this area right here. Okay. And so what we have is we have a, uh, it, on one view, we have what looks to be a focal uh, density with um, punctate calcifications. They're pleomorphic. Um, and I'd like to see them in at least one other view and possibly a 90 to see if they layer. But the point is I have a, a density underneath it. So, okay. And with the uh, skin thickening and the ulcerations, I would think seriously about um, I, I would first think about a, a skin biopsy to see if you could have lymphangitic spread in the tissue there, and then you'd, I think if that's the case, I'm not even sure if you need a nodule inside because then you need a mastectomy as opposed to a uh, okay. breast so, cancer. So what are you thinking? What's the diagnosis? I don't know if you said it or not. Well, I, inflammatory breast cancer is what okay. I'm thinking of. Does anybody agree or disagree? Which okay. This is with a, a crusty nipple discharge. Now, on her regular mammogram, she, this is all fat. The skin is focally thickened right here, just at the nipple. There's not a lot of increased density throughout the breast. An inflammatory carcinoma is an edematous process because of lymphatic obstruction, and the breast is markedly dense with markedly thick skin diffusely over the entire breast. So this is not the pattern of an inflammatory cancer. It is the pattern of Paget's disease of the nipple. It involves the nipple areolar complex with skin thickening right here. It's associated, it's due to DCIS, which extends from the ducts anteriorly through the lactiferous uh, sinus and onto the areolar, that areola. That's what causes the nipple changes. It's also associated with a deep uh, cancer. In about 80% of the cases, you can find either a mass or calcifications extending farther back, as in this case. Uh, this was seen on two views. They didn't layer. She does have a lot of benign calcifications, as you pointed out, uh, but these were not benign. These were uh, actually biopsied, and those were uh, invasive cancer. The area around the nipple right here, you, do, you were correct in saying that you do a skin punch biopsy, and you get the pagetoid cells, which are a big nuclei. So here is the MLO view. Here again, here's the nipple, and here's this cancer, which is right back here. She also had an MRI just to confirm all of this. So on the MRI, you can see where her nipple, her nipple areolar complexes is markedly enhancing as compared to the normal left side, which does not enhance. And then this is that area of density calcifications, which was biopsied and proven to be cancer. And on the sagittal view, again, you can see that the enhancement in the nipple areolar complex and immediately retroareolar region. And then the second area of cancer here. And the treatment is mastectomy for Paget's disease of the nipple. It's uh, ductal carcinoma presenting with nipple involvement, eczematous reaction of the skin, always associated with an underlying lesion. You look for a mass or a calcification. It's um, a rare cancer. It's over, often overlooked by the clinicians. The patient comes in with this complaint of her nipple, and they, they give her lotions to put on it and treat it. 
uh, like it's eczema and it just doesn't go away. I think this lady had her nipple problem for over a year before she finally was referred for a mammogram. Okay, this is a 42-year-old with fullness in the right breast. This is the right MLO and the left MLO. Uh, okay, so we have MLO views of the right and left breast. Um, both breasts have uh, scattered fibroglandular tissue. And I think um, that the right breast, when compared to the left, looks smaller. Okay. Not, Here's the CC views. Okay, so there's, uh, again, we confirm that um, the right breast is uh, markedly smaller when compared to the left. Um, this is compatible with, uh, I don't see any underlying masses, uh, and I don't see any suspicious calcifications. Perhaps um, may want to, if, since the patient has um, complaints, I would examine the patient, maybe do an ultrasound just to make sure that I can't see an underlying mass. Okay. Um, what else can we do? Uh, if you're looking at a nodule on a chest x-ray, what's the first thing you're supposed to ask? Sort of the first thing you ask on a mammogram, too. If you have a, a questionable abnormality, what can you do first before we do the additional views and ultrasound? I, I examine the patient. And, that... Yeah, or you can compare it to her old mammogram mm -hmm. or her old chest x-ray, whatever. So uh, she did have a, this lady, this was not a baseline mammogram. So she did have an old mammogram. So these are her CCBs from 2001, right and left. So um, looking at her prior mammograms, the rest of that time were uh, symmetric. Um, so this and same thing on the MLO views. Okay, so this is the MLO from 2001. Again, the right and the left were the same size in 2001. And now, in 2003, the right breast is half the size of the left breast. So uh, this is compatible with a shrinking breast phenomenon. Um, and I think that you can see that in um, invasive, lo invasive lobular carcinoma when there's no underlying mammographic abnormality except a shrinking breast, no underlying mass or calcifications. Okay, that's very good. This is the shrinking breast sign, which is a sign of infiltrating lobular carcinoma. And why does it shrink if we don't see the mass? What causes, what's the mechanism of the shrinkage? I think it's the um, inflammatory, kind of like a scarring reaction caused by chronic like fibrosis from the okay. mass. It's the, the breast is filled with tumor. If you remember, infiltrating lobular is a single file type cancer. It's in the stroma, it's not in the ducts. It can creep along outside the ducts, cell by cell, so that it totally infiltrates the breast. And that makes the breast very hard and full, and it's so hard that when you do your mammogram, you cannot compress it. So this, the, the actual appearance of it shrinking is because when they put that paddle on, it won't compress. It's rock hard. Uh, so just comparing the 2001 to the 2003, you can see the marked difference in sides. This one, I didn't get flipped right. But, uh, she also had an abnormal lymph node. This was uh, an abnormal lymph node. And on ultrasound, you may just see some shadowing. You might not see anything because, again, it's just a single file uh, cancer invading the whole breast or infiltrating the whole breast. There is some loss of the normal architecture here with maybe uh, some hypoechoic masses. And any time we're suspicious of infiltrating lobular carcinoma, at least at the University of Chicago, what do we do? An MRI to evaluate for the extent of the disease. And we found that infiltrating lobular can be a lot more extensive than any mammographic findings. And so this is her MRI. This is the abnormal right side. This is the normal left side. And you can see how it's just a spider web of increased uh, enhancement throughout the entire right breast. And so this is, this is again, this is the axial normal left breast, no enhancement, the spider web of uh, increased density, uh, which was infiltrating lobular carcinoma. Uh, differential of a unilateral small breast. It can be secondary to surgical and radiation therapy, 
down the line, like two or three years after radiation therapy, when the edema has resolved and the fibrosis has set in, uh, a trauma, especially as a child and the breast bud doesn't develop, can give you a, a unilaterally small breast, although you tend not to have a lot of parenchymal density, uh, and then decreased compressibility due to a diffuse infiltrative process, such as infiltrating lobular carcinoma. And actually, Dr. Newstead said I should add uh, idiopathic. A lot of times, the lady will tell you, well, my right breast has always been smaller than my left, and that's just an idiopathic uh, sign. But this lady obviously had a new finding, not something that was old. And this is just a pathology side of these tumor cells, which go sort of single, singly in the stroma. They're not in the ducts, infiltrating lobular cancer. It's 10% of invasive breast cancer. It presents with distortion. Often there's no mass. It rarely calcifies as opposed to infiltrating ductal cancer. The mammogram may be normal even with a large rock-hard mass, as in this case. And you uh, may only see shadowing on the ultrasound. Okay, 62-year-old female with a swollen, tender left breast. Okay, these are two MLO views, the left and the right. And the left breast shows diffuse increased uh, in the density and uh, <clears throat> more so in the retroareolar region. And the, both the uh, CC views, and again, we see the same finding. The left breast is more dense, uh, more so diffusely, and uh, I'm not so sure about the skin. I think may, the skin may, be, may also be thickened more so in the outer portion, well, just lateral to the areolar region. And so what's your differential diagnosis? So in such a case, uh, when there is a diffuse increase in one, on one side I'm considering more some a diffuse process such as if the, uh, an inflammatory ca 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 carcinoma, if she has uh, more uh, signs of uh, infection, there could be mastitis. Uh, if she has had some surgery, some kind of surgery on the left axilla for anything else, not for breast CA, but could be some lymphatic obstruction there. It's not bilateral, so I'm not thinking in terms of CHF. So that's about it. Okay. So as opposed to the Paget's disease we saw before, this is an inflammatory cancer. The whole breast is big. The whole breast is dense and the skin is burned out. This is the problem a lot of times with inflammatory cancers. It's hard to phototime it because it's just full, it's heavy, it's obstructed because of the inflammatory cancer. And how is inflammatory cancer diagnosed? Uh, it's, so we can do a skin biopsy. There is, in, uh, there is an invasion of the dermal lymphatics by the tumor. That's and correct. That. And that's why you get this very large edematous breast is because the lymphatics, the dermal lymphatics are blocked with the tumor, and uh, that's why the skin is thickening, thickened. A lot of times, at least initially, you don't see the actual cancer within the breast because it's obscured by all of the edema within the breast. So a unilateral lymphedema pattern is in this case, which is opposite to the shrinking breast, this is an, a, a markedly enlarged breast with skin thickening and increased density. The differential is inflammatory carcinoma, mastitis, radiation therapy. This would be acute radiation therapy changes as opposed to chronic, which would shrink the breast. Anything that would unilaterally block lymphatic drainage in the axilla on the affected side. Unilateral CHF is very uncommon but can occur, and then any kind of trauma, especially burns. This was inflammatory carcinoma. It's subdural lymphatic involvement with breast cancer. It's 1 to 4% of all breast cancers. It's diagnosed by a punch biopsy of the skin. If you go and examine the patient, their skin is erythematous. The pu de orange, their skin looks like an orange peel. The nipple couldn't be inverted. There's axillary lymphadenopathy. It has a very poor prognosis. And it's treated with chemotherapy and XRT. It's usually not treated with um, surgery. Uh, it's neoadjuvant treatment. Most of the time, they don't even know where the cancer is. Okay. 73-year-old female with CLL and a palpable mass in the right breast. These are the MLOs. This is a skin marker. This is not the palpable mass. 
in cc's again this is a skin marker we have uh, bilateral mlo views of both breasts the breast parenchyma is extremely dense uh, bilaterally uh, in the inferior right breast, uh, there's a large um, mass that I can see. It's heterogeneous in appearance. Um, part of the margins are, part of the superficial margins are fairly well circumscribed, but the posterior margins are poorly defined. Um, I can't see any calcifications, but uh, we have a large palpable mass. I would uh, examine the patient. I'm pretty sure I could palpate this, and I would do spot compression views as well as ultrasound to further evaluate it. And on these spot compression views, again, we have a large mass, which is heterogeneous in appearance. Again, the superficial margin is fairly well uh, circumscribed, but the posterior and medial margins are poorly defined. Um, in, uh, in an elderly patient, um, this could possibly represent a uh, hamartoma with a kind of a breast and a breast appearance. Um, in a perimenopausal woman, this could possibly be uh, a cyst with partially obscured margins due to overlying breast parenchyma. Um, and why do, why do you say hamartoma? Well, it's, it's kind of it's heterogeneous in appearance, and part of the uh, mass has, you know, looks like texture or fibroglandular density is similar to breast parenchyma. And what do you need for a hamartoma? What density? Uh, fat. Okay, as well. is there fat in it? Well, I think maybe uh, deep. Okay. There could be some. So, what are you going to do next? Um, I would do an ultrasound. And here we have uh, an ovoid mass, which is uh, wider than it is tall. It has a an echogenic capsule and is fairly well defined. Centrally, there's hyperechoic areas as well as uh, hypoechoic areas. The hyperechoic areas um, could represent fat, and I think that this is consistent with a hamartoma. Okay. Um, and so this is a hamartoma or a fibroadenolipoma. It looks like a breast within a breast. So if we go back to the mammogram. If you look in the inside of it here, if you didn't have it sort of outlined by fat around it, it would look sort of almost exactly like the rest of her breast. You should see a capsule, and there is a partial capsule here. Part of it is lost, though, in the density and parenchyma there. It's encapsulated. It may be palpable. It can even enlarge, but it doesn't need to be biopsied if you can prove that it's encapsulated and that it has both the density of uh, parenchyma and fat within it. So, Christina, you know, you can see the difference now between a lipoma, which is totally lucent on the inside, versus a hamartoma, which has the breast parenchyma in it. And lastly, thank goodness, 42-year-old female with a palpable mass in her left breast. Brent, we, why don't you take this one? Okay. We have a right and left MLO views of both breasts. There's a, a scattered fibroglandular, ten, uh, fibroglandular t tissue bilaterally, and in the left breast, uh, there's a very dense, well-circumscribed um, lesion, which appears to be um, somewhat retro retroirelar. Yeah, it's in the far lateral aspect, actually, of the, uh, the, the left breast. Um, I see no other abnormalities. It doesn't appear that this mass has uh, any calcification from this exposure. I'd get a spot mag view of this mass. Um, yeah, okay. from, I can see it a little bit better of the CC view. Um, it looks like it might be cystic. Uh, there is actually something that I'm seeing now okay. by the CC view in the contralateral breast, that one, um, which that looks was, a little uh, bit more worrisome. What'd you say? Um, 
that was spotted. That's nothing. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so then going back to the uh, left breast, um, if this lesion appears to be very well marginated, I wonder if it may be a cyst. I do an ultrasound to further evaluate it. Okay, what are if you going to do see, first? I'm um, sorry, uh, additional mammography. So, uh, well, physical exam. Obviously, since she's here for a uh, diagnostic mammogram, if she has a palpable lesion, she's not just a screener. Um, and then she's going to get some spot radiography of it. Um, I'm seeing what I think just to be, by the MLO view, some superimposed fibroglandular tissue immediately adjacent to it. It looks a little bit more clean by the CC view. Um, I don't think these spot views contribute much beyond the initial mammogram that you showed. And your differential diagnosis before the ultrasound? I see. Well, uh, some history would help. Um, I'd like to know how long this has been around, if she's had any trauma to the breast. No uh, trauma. Okay, so um, it could be uh, a breast cyst, an area of uh, fat necrosis. Uh, well, again, you said there's no trauma, and so I exclude uh, fat necrosis or uh, hematoma. Um, uh, I'd like to know if it's cystic or solid, so I'd uh, do an ultrasound. Right, we're, we're going to do an ultrasound, but let's yeah. get the differential before the sure. ultrasound. Um, it doesn't look like uh, a tumor to me. I mean, it's got fairly clean margins. It has no associated architect ar architectural distortion, and I see no uh, calcifications. There's no overlying skin thickening from what I can see. Um, okay, we're going to take a vote. I guess. How many think this is a cancer? Okay, what a, how many think it's a cyst? Okay, so we have like one person thinking it's a cancer and three people thinking it's a cyst. What does everybody else think it is? Well, I mean, Dr. I'll, Senate, I'll, I'll grant you that it may be a little bit more ill-marginated in the posterior aspect of the MLO view. However, um, you know, I, I'm wanting to work this up. I'm not ready to send her out the door just yet. Okay. And What's, radiology is not a what, what, democratic process. <laughs> if you have a, a nodular density, fairly well circumscribed in a person, young woman, what's your first diagnosis? Well, yeah, like a fibro, uh, you know, a fibroadenoma. Um, and this appears, so this is not a cystic lesion. It's got some internal uh, echo character. And so it, tends, it shadows. It's got some posterior acoustic shadowing. And um, was any Doppler done? It was... Fibroadenoma is what I'm, I'm thinking now in a okay. young person. Okay. Would you just say, oh, by the mammogram and the ultrasound, this is definitely a fibroadenoma. We don't need to biopsy no, it. No, we would biopsy it, uh, particularly if she's concerned about it. Okay. And the most concerning thing is this dense shadowing, right? Right. I mean, if, if it wasn't for the dense shadowing, if it was a little wider than it was tall, this is almost round, Parallel. right? Yeah. Uh, there's the dense shadowing. There does look to be a, a sharp thin capsule here, but it just doesn't have enough of the ultrasound criteria to say 100%, well, this is a fibroadenoma, don't worry about it, come back again next year. Plus, it's, what, three centimeters and it's palpable. So all of those things make us concerned that, that it's something other than a, a simple fibroadenoma, whether it's a mucinous or a medullary carcinoma, a colloid carcinoma can look like this. Um, uh, it's not a cyst because there's absolutely no acoustic enhancement behind it. It's dense shadowing. So it's not a complex cyst by any means. So we need to go ahead and biopsy it. And the answer is fibroadenoma. It's the most common lesion in women in their 30s. The peak incidence is in 20s and 30s, although there is a bimodal incidence. And you can see uh, fibroadenomas in the perimenopausal women or you can see their fibroadenomas begin to grow because fibroadenomas are uh, sensitive to estrogens, and that's why fibroadenomas grow during pregnancy, and they can grow in the perimenopausal woman. Uh, uh, fibroadenoma has to have a combination of stroma, epithelium, and muc mucoid elements. 25% are multiple. Um, and bilateral, our highest number that we've counted are 18 fibroadenoma in one uh, woman in both breasts. A mammogram, they are typically well circumscribed, smoothly marginated, macrolobulated, but they can mimic any lesion, including cancer. And by ultrasound, they should have a capsule, 
homogeneous, wider than tall, with peripheral vessels draping over it. Uh, as far as the shadowing, most of the time there is neither acoustic shadowing or enhancement, but you can see I've seen both within fibroadenoma. Thank you for spending the extra time and have a good evening.